This one's going to be episode number 13. And um, it doesn't, there's a couple things about it that I should mention. The first one being it doesn't have a lot of, it doesn't really have any construction in it. So it's kind of like the last one. And I can kind of see that this is sort of a stage where I'm accumulating a bunch of the, the you know, the important parts, if you will, for the van build project. And as I'm getting all the parts, I'm spending some time working out the relationships between everything and where things are going to go. And at the same time, I'm working my little hiney off uh, with a lot of work at, at work. So it's a very busy time and there's a lot going on in my life at this stage. And I'm just trying to fit it all in. So while all this is going on, the parts are coming in the mail. And uh, I share some of the process with how it's all going to work itself out, if you will. And so that's mostly what's going on in this video. But it's kind of telling the story for the van build itself. And I feel like I should not omit this video. So, um, and then the other thing about this video is... <laughs> and and you know that it it kind of has it kind of goes along with a lot of this older footage that I've got from all these videos in the past but I'm uh, some of the angles aren't great the audio is not fantastic I don't have the ability to go back and fix any of it I'm doing the best I can in the editor trying to make it work um, but some of it, some of it is a lot of work, and it can be a real challenge sometimes. Certain clips um, can take me a half an hour just to kind of tweak and get right, and uh, it's kind of a complicated process. There are shortcuts to it, and there's you know there's certain templates and stuff like that that I can save and sort of you know use on other clips and stuff like that. But it's uh, nevertheless it's it's a bit of a, a chore. So, and I'm not complaining, it's, 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 it's fun, but it's, it's, it's kind of like, I'm, I guess I'm just trying to say there's not much I can do about it. I'm doing the best I can with old footage. Unfortunately, back then when I was filming all this stuff, I didn't have the benefit of running it through the editor, you know, the very next day or something like that, where I could go and look at it and be like, oh, okay, well, maybe I should try filming in a different angle. Um, so I'm not staring up my nose the whole time because I do a lot of shots like that in this video and probably some other videos where you're going to be looking up at me. And then, um, you know, or I'm not as mindful about certain sounds in the environment or how I'm projecting my voice, that kind of thing. So anyway, it's all fun and games, but, um, you know, here it is. Okay, I got a little bit of time, so I'm gonna open up that uh, heater box and see what's inside. I'll show you what else I got. So I got this thing. It's a uh, digital thermometer, um, and it's also got a probe on it and a laser. Um, I've always wanted a little spot laser and a small one, so this is gonna be good for all kinds of things for me and the job I do to take the temperatures. Uh, but this one's my personal one, so it's going to be in the van with me, and I can also use the probe to like measure um, like meat temperature from cooking meat. It's got to be over a certain temperature, uh, so that's that's that. And I can also find cold spots in the van, so I'll do a little video on that later. There we go. <laughs> Man, that thing's pretty big. Uh, right here, got the controls and the remote. And I think this is the fuel pump. That's what I really wanted. Oh, I'm afraid about this part. That is big, bigger than the Okay, and my con 
concern with this is it's not going to fit in the van anywhere. You have to get a different fuel tank. Okay, so I'm just going to put this back in the box. Um, I'll take a look at it later on and do a proper video. Um, it's kind of on the cheap side of things, a little bit cheaper than what I like to see in a product, but uh, I took a risk. I knew that the diesel Chinese heater was like cheap. It was only 250 bucks. Um, so what I'll have to do is I'll take the actual casing all apart and just inspect everything, make sure the gaskets all look good. Um, and then uh, play around with, you know, holding it in different spots in the van and seeing how I like the way it fits and feels in there. And um, hopefully it's fine and I'll go with it. And if it's not, then I'll consider maybe doing a return on it before I even hook it all up. Or I will um, find somebody else that wants it and get them to take it. If that's the case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with a more expensive one. Um, it's called a um, planner, I believe it's called. It's very similar to the D2. Uh, well, it's a planner D2. It's very similar to the Webesto or the S bar. Uh, the cool thing about the planner is that it's got a built in altitude um, um, monitor in it. So it, it's kind of like a smart heater. It knows what altitude you're at and it's going to um, change the fuel and air intake and all that for. Um, uh, different pressures and stuff like that so um, but it's it's about 1200 bucks so that's a lot more money um, I was gonna go that route right off the bat but um, just given that I was thinking about this vehicle and not going too expensive with the stuff inside uh, but the way I'm doing the electrical system and the fridge and the max air fan like it's starting to add up um, price-wise um, if ever anything happened to this van I don't know if any of those things add value to it or if I ever get any of that back and I probably wouldn't um, it almost make more sense to rip all the stuff out of here take it to the new van if, um, if it came to that which I don't want it to do so anyway I'm gonna box this up and we'll take a look at it later on I'm gonna go to work and but it's here now so, so that's good so yeah, last night was really interesting. I was, um, I thought we could probably get this job done by 2 a.m. And I thought for sure I'd be done my part of the job before these two other guys would be. But it was total opposite. Those guys finished up at about 3.30 and I was still going strong on mine. And, uh, <clears throat> and I could see they were just wasted. Like one of them, super red bloodshot eyes and I was like oh shit I've been so involved in my work and they were so involved in their work and I guess it just sort of hit them but I'm gonna check in with him today and just see that he's, he's all good uh, and the other guys already checked back and he, he looked fine he was just aggro you could tell he was like he was like fuck night shifts <laughs> sometimes you're driving behind a big truck and they come up to a light and you're kind of just following along you're like I'm not sure if it's green or red but they're certainly driving through it and then you realize oh shit no you know now that I'm kind of moved in my van I'm just like I, I can't imagine any other vehicle that's not a van at this point so if I get another vehicle it's going to be a van <clears throat> anyway, um, to me, there's just so much extra value in a van. Like, you can kit this thing out, you can sleep in it, you can go on adventures with it. Um, even if you live in a house and you got a van that you kind of like, you know, a cheap van like this, 2500 bucks, and you sink in, like, let's say you spend 10 grand on the whole thing and, and you do some maintenance on it. Like, like that's literally what this vehicle is that I'm driving. It's it's kind of in the ballpark of ten thousand dollars. You know the build, 
cost and then the vehicle cost. It's nothing pretty, but you know, at the end of the day, I can pull over and have a snooze. I can go to an adventure. I can go places, bring people. Um, I live in it rent free. I am spending my money on this build, mind you, you guys. Like, so I sold my Jeep for fifteen thousand dollars, which was which which was good, but it, it, you know it was kind of choking too. It was like below what what I really wanted. I was thinking I'd get twenty for it. Um, at least that's what everybody else's Jeep, kind of like mine, was going for on the market. But. So okay, I, you know, I got 15 grand, paid off my bills, got into this, and then I'm like, okay, well, I got some maintenance to do on it. And then I'm like, oh, the actual build is actually a little bit more costly and time consuming than I thought. So this is my first time doing it, and I'm a fucking skilled dude with tools. Um, and uh, I mean, maybe I'm, I'm going at it at the level that I'm going at it because it's what my background is, but. Anyway, it's uh, it's a project for sure, and it's uh, it's like you know, it takes a little bit of time, takes a little bit of money. You know, about ten thousand dollars on this thing all in so far, and I might be going a little bit over. So financially, I'm going to be in the same debt that I was in before. There's another cute girl. cute girls lately. <laughs> I did hang out with one the other day. Uh, I'll save that story for later. <laughs> I'm gonna get my mail and then I gotta go to work, so. All right, thanks for listening. Yeah. Okay, let's check it out. My buddy Chrome's always opening his shit with a knife, but I just use my band key. <laughs> Ta-da! Alright, Rufan, we're in business. It's kind of... What's the expiration of? That thing feels kind of hard, actually. Hopefully that's uh, just a hard tube. Tube feel. Oh yeah. Tube's kind of a uh, thick cardboard, so maybe it's probably fine. Dun, dun, dun. No, it's just a box. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Time to go. Tuesday night in school now, so you can see that sleep dip is hitting me hard right now. And I just started class. I'm uh, planning a night shift after this too. Fucking gotta go do another one, holy shit. And then I gotta get up at five tomorrow morning for a fucking full day. For a good day. <laughs> Just feeling like, ah, uh, it's a bit much. Okay, see you later. This is uh, the next morning. Uh, school was good yesterday, and uh, after that I went and did a night shift at one of the studios. Finished at 2 a.m. Um, got home, uh, or got back to the house that I'm staying at, and, uh, yeah, took a three hour nap and now I'm, I woke up at five and I'm at another studio. I got guys showing up to do work. Uh, I'm gonna pop a ceiling panel right here. Uh, one of these, it's going right there. And I mean, that's pretty easy actually, but 
The big thing is uh, installation of new humidifier. So there's a uh, plumber, sheet metal, electrical, uh, you name it. Uh, might have to get to work and do some uh, do some of this work myself, actually, because it looks like something wasn't done here yesterday. Anyway, today's gonna be a little bit of a stretch for sure. Um, right now it's about 6.30 and I'm not sure how long I'm gonna go for. I've got work to do at the studio, I'm meeting somebody at 11 a.m. Uh, to put that ceiling panel up and I'll be taking all that stuff back downtown. Um, and before I even do that, I gotta run back downtown um, and do a little bit of uh, cleanup work from the, the night shift last night. And, um, yeah, and I told, I told Chrome, so I met him the other day, he was parked just beside me, and he's back in Vancouver, and I said, uh, I told him I'd hang out with him maybe this afternoon or tomorrow afternoon, but man, I'm like feeling it, so I can go say hi maybe, um, and I pick him up a present. Um, and then I'm gonna have to get some rack time in, um, and I'm, I'm gonna have to start prepping. I know it's already Wednesday, but I'm gonna start prepping for this weekend, because uh, I'm gonna lose my energy soon, and I gotta get some rest and get a few more things done. I also gotta connect with the battery folks today, um, chat with them about, um, DC to DC, uh, chargers, and, um, the setup that I'm planning. Just make sure that everything, everything is going to work correctly and uh, the voltages are all going to work for this new battery. Um, and that's it. So I'll keep you posted. Uh, I was going to try and do uh, build that template with my ceiling actually in the van so what I've got to do is I'm gonna I've got some paper in there a big roll of paper some tape and I'm gonna build a template for the ceiling and once I do that then I can go and cut that out on that quarter inch ply that I've got the nice birch stuff so we'll see okay so <laughs> it's progress at the studio got like all guys are here electrician plumber sheet metal Oh, I just saw a friend drive by in van. Cool. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Doing a video. Yeah. Good morning, you guys. <laughs> uh, feels kind of weird, actually, because I'm like saying you guys, and when I'm recording this video, I don't even have a YouTube channel or anything like that <laughs> right now, so I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I don't even know if I'd really have an audience. I have no clue, so. <clears throat> but these are all practice run videos anyway that I'm just like getting used to the whole thing, and then eventually I'll start pumping out some real video footage. Anyway, um, yeah, woke up, uh, had a good night's sleep. I caught up on some lost sleep, or I don't know if you could say catch up on lost sleep, but I, I got some rest. And, uh, holy shit, there's some traffic. Damn, this is gonna be... <sighs> Bit of a grind. So I had a debate, it's two in the afternoon, so I'm a little bit shy about doing this now. But what I was gonna do is cut a hole right there and stick the Max fan in there. But I kinda need to be back at North Van around four for the dog. 
and two hours to do that, yeah, I could totally do it, but um, I don't like rushing things and I kind of want to sit with that one and maybe ponder it a little bit more closely before I start cutting metal because there's no going back once you cut the hole. So, um, But I really kind of want to do it. I don't like the idea that it's sitting here. Now I've got a heater sitting here with the Max Air fan. Um, and I don't like the idea of those things sitting in the yoga storage in a place that has been prone to getting broken into. Um, on another note, got some exciting news. I, um, I got in touch with Asmin Solar out of Kelowna. They sell the silicon dioxide batteries that work in minus 40 to plus 70 degrees Celsius. Huge temperature range, way better than an AGM battery. Um, super, super safe, a little bit lighter than an AGM battery and charge life cycles is almost as good as a lithium iron phosphate. So, um, I haven't seen too many like in-depth reviews of these sorts of things, like with someone like Will Prowse or something like that. But I kind of feel like maybe I should send him an email and say, Hey dude, can you, um, do this? Cause this company that makes these batteries is pretty interesting technology and just want to see like what's a breakdown of this look like what did i just spend my money on because i just spent i just bought two two 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries that are going into this van um so those are being shipped out to me tomorrow and i also ordered a renogy dc to dc with MPPT charge controller. So um, that's a 50 amp DC to DC charger, which is perfect because those two batteries take 25 amps as charging input. So that's gonna be perfect. And approximately it'd take me five hours. No, one, two, three, five hours. No, it would take me about 4.2 hours or something like that to fully charge them from absolute zero, like 11 volts to um, 13 point whatever volts. So it would take me f just over four hours of driving to charge them a full with that DC to DC charger. So that's awesome. Um, and then of course solar, I'm not sure yet. Of course that's where why I gotta take some time thinking about this is because I got to think, can I fit 300 watts on the roof of this thing? And if so, What's the configuration layout need to look like? Um, is that really what I want to do? Or do I want to like just go with 200 watts? Because 200 watts is going to be a lot easier to throw up there on the roof with the Max Air Fan. Um, yeah. That's that. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'm calling it, man. I'm going to I'm gonna leave. Um, see you guys later. Later, later. Hi having a beer uh, crazy busy work week so I'm just out walking the dog in North Van and I think what I'm gonna do is actually pop by the range and and just check the sighting on my rifle um, got a feeling about that rabbit so when when I came back from the hunting trip on Saturday I took the um, barreled action off of the stock and just cleaned everything out and then refitted it all. But I know from experience that sometimes when you do that, uh, you can change the point of impact for the first one or two shots and um, until the action sort of resettles back into the stock. And uh, mm, yeah, that might've been reason why I, I missed that guy a little left. Anyway, I'll be up there Friday afternoon gonna go hunting Saturday and Sunday. Be fun if you want to come.